Good day and welcome to Home at the Hollow. Today's recipe is one that is so versatile that you're going to just absolutely find. I know you will find a way to use it and incorporate it into your meal routines. I've actually been working very, very hard and have gotten it to this point. It is an Italian baked rigatoni inspired dish. I really don't even honestly have a, name, a proper name for it, but it's, it's pasta. It's either hot and, and again, this is where the versatility comes with this particular recipe. You can use either hot, sweet or mild bulk pork sausage mixed with a little bit of a half a pound of, you know, turkey meat, beef meat, however you want to do it, browned off, but it's um, just a wee bit of pasta, a wee bit of love. And at this point where you have it at this point, you can run it right in the freezer, or you can put it in a slow cooker, or you can do just like I'm going to do and had a, a very, very busy morning, and I'm gonna just bake this off in a conventional oven. We are having a most welcome cold spell here in East Tennessee, and I'm anxious to get the oven started. I'm going to serve this with my healthier coleslaw, which is on page eight of my brand new cookbook. And, uh, you know, if this interests you, then keep on watching. So I have been browning my Italian sausage and ground beef mixture, and I totally have it totally, totally cooked. And what I'm going to add is a combination of onion, green pepper, and celery. Certainly, if you don't have, and if you don't like that combination, you do whatever suits you, but this is what I'm doing. And I'm gonna just get this and get this to where the onion is just lightly softened. I also have here, I don't think that you guys can see, but I also here, have here a uh, clove of garlic. I'm going to let this saute down a little bit first, and then I will add this clove of garlic because you guys know you can't saute and cook garlic so, so much, or otherwise it would be really, really super bitter. But I'm going to just work on this and uh, we'll carry on from there. So we are really sizzling now, and um, I wish I wish I could give you guys a little bit of a smell of this because uh, it's just wonderful. I found a really good deal on Italian sausage, so I had to I had to try this out. We've got to try this out. I've already boiled eight ounces of any kind of pasta that you have. I just happen to have the uh, vegetable pasta, eight ounces. Cook it for six to eight minutes al dente because it's going to go in the bottom of a dish and you certainly don't want it to disappear when you bake it, but just six to eight minutes, not, not much more than that. Turn this down just a wee wee bit. I've got my clove of garlic. And I can tell you, I do not have mad knife skills. I can, uh, you know, get a little bit done here and there. It's certainly not perfect, but um, I'm just, I've just always been a home cook. So I'm going to add this garlic and just really, just give it a really quick, you know, sear. Turn this way, way down. So that's pretty good. That's not bad. And what you want to do, I think you guys can see me, uh, is get a 9 by, what is it, 9 by 13 pan. I greased it just very, very lightly. And I'm going to take my pasta that's been cooked and drained. 
and I'm just going to pour it right in here. And continue to cook this for just a little bit. So I've taken it off the heat. And what I'm going to add in is a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce and a about a 14 and a half to 15 ounce can of petite diced tomatoes with the sauce that's in there. And just get this and put this in here. And give it a good stir. I'm going to add a tablespoon of Italian seasoning and a wee bit of salt, just a little bit of salt and pepper, just a little bit. And give this a bit of a stir. And this looks really, really good. It'll, and it smells wonderful. I'm gonna set this aside and bring my, my casserole dish back. And what I have here is, now what I've got is an Italian blend of cheese. Certainly, if you wanna do just cheddar or mozzarella or whatever suits you. And that's the one thing that I really, really like about this recipe is that, you know, if you don't wanna do onions, don't put onions in it or, you know, what ha what, what have you. It's it's you know, pretty, pretty flexible. Uh, and even with the pasta, as long as it's pasta, use what you have. But I'm going to just put it's a cup and a half of Italian inspired grated cheese. Going to get all of that in there. And I'm going to allow this to cool about five minutes before I put it over this dish. So my meat mixture has cooled and I'm gonna just pour it right over. And now you can, if you want to, you can, excuse me always guys, sorry. You can, if you want to, Put this in a slow cooker if you want to. What I try to do, and it's again, this is my way of being, you know, kind of a lazy cook. I'll get this done ahead of time, like I'm doing now, and I will wrap it up very, very tightly, cover it very well, and I will put it in the fridge overnight, and then bake it off tomorrow, 350, about. 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. And I find that, you know, for the herbs and the tomato sauce and everything to kind of soak into the pasta, that's al dente in the bottom. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let this soak overnight, bake it off 40, 45 minutes or so. And at that time, open your oven, sprinkle a wee bit of cheddar cheese if you like and continue baking it maybe another 10 minutes until the cheese is uh, melted and bubbly and happy and we'll go from there but i'm going to work on this i will bake this off and present it to you so we are ready to get started and get this in the oven i've got about a cup and a half of shredded cheddar cheese. I went ahead and put a little bit of it on here. So at this point, you can bake it for about 40 minutes uh, at 350 and then spread the remainder of your cheese and bake off another five, 10 minutes. You, you really do want to wash it though at that, at that point. But make sure before you put the rest of your cheddar cheese on here to make sure it's bubbling, make sure it's hot, make sure it's really good and a robust go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake it at 350. I'm going to check it probably at about 20 minutes to make sure that it's not over browning. And, and at that point, I may opt to cover it back up and 
continue baking it on. It's just one of those things you have to kind of try and see how it works out. But this is going to be delicious. And my casserole is out of the oven and it just looks, oh goodness, absolutely delicious. I've got my healthier coleslaw served on the side in which that's on page eight in my cookbook. But uh, I'm going to just take a, a wee bit of a taste for this uh, for you guys. I'm sure you know what I've I've been smelling it the past hour plus, and oh my goodness, it smells delicious. Oh goodness. Very, very good. I definitely recommend when you cook your pasta going al dente because it, it is still, as I baked it off, it is still, you know, firm, but it's absolutely, the pasta is cooked to perfection. Oh my goodness. Now I did go, this time I did go a little bit light on the meat. Usually it's about a pound of ground beef to a half a pound of uh, whatever kind of sausage that you like. Um, I had hot Italian sausage and that is what is in mine and I had just a pound and that's what I had. I went a little bit heavier on the vegetables just because, but basically, oh my goodness, it's really, really delicious. Now I know this coleslaw, I know this coleslaw knocks it out of the park and it is so healthy. It is so, so healthy for you. So I hope that you guys give this recipe a try. I'm so proud of it. And I hope that you subscribe and join me on my adventure going through my cookbook and going through life home at the hollow. Bye guys.